everybody, we're the Babes of Bourbon. I am Megan Rudder. And I am Eric Rudder. And guess what we're going to be doing today, guys? Da -da -da. We're going to be drinking Booker's for the first time on the channel. And it's the Donahue's batch. Yeah, and this is my first time trying um, Booker's in general. Mm -hmm. uh, Have you tried it before? I think well, maybe one pour. Yeah, so it'll be exciting to see how... How it Good tastes. This is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like Eric said, this is the Donahue's batch. It's the 2021-01, so their first batch of the year. Um, it's 125.3 proof. Um, and it's aged for, they were very specific in the little part <laughs> they gave, six years, 11 months, and four days. And not only that, but they also give the breakdown of every single barrel of exactly how long it was aged and where in the warehouse and which warehouse it was aged in. Mm -hmm. Which is awesome. To yeah. See. yeah. Um, the bottle is $95. I think it's actually $100 on MSRP. We found it for $95. And then unfortunately the very next store we were at, um, we found it was for heartbreaking. Which was uh, very heartbreaking. So <laughs> That one got us right here, guys. We'll just say normally it costs around $85. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like 95. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to still say 95. But just like the packaging is very, it's very pretty. Like it comes in this mm -hmm. beautiful wood box. It just, it just looks like a little collector's item. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, so I'm sure some of that money is going into the packaging, but that's okay. That's not a bad thing. Yes. And much like the Elijah Craig barrel proofs, they come out with these, it's normally four times a year. Mm -hmm. I know 2020 was only three times, probably with everything going on. And I think mm -hmm. one of the batches didn't meet their quality check for it. So gotcha. normally it's four batches a year and it's like their high proof selected bourbon mm -hmm. of choice. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't know anything about Booker's, if you're like me, I just did some learning about it. Um, it is a Jim Beam product, like we said, and it's named Booker's because Booker No was the Jim Beam master distiller. His son, Fred No, is now the master distiller, mm -hmm. but um, Booker was at Jim Beam from 1960 to 1992. So quite a bit of time being the master distiller there left a huge impact. Um, and it's called the Donahue batch or Donahue's batch um, because of Booker's good friend, Mike Donahue, who also worked for the company as a mm -hmm. sales rep. Um, and he was one of the people that encouraged Booker to start creating this specific bottle and assisted with some like sales and distribution. So they named it uh, Donahue's batch in honor of that retired worker, which I think is a pretty nice story. That's awesome. Yes. It is. Now, guys. Ooh, that was probably really noisy. Yes, it may have been. That's Apologies, okay. everybody. <laughs> Let me get the, the... The glass. Almost glass. I'm glad it's not real glass off. You want to get the bottle out? I will. We <laughs> left this completely sealed. And it's going to be interesting getting yes. the wax off. Bottle pop. Oh, I'm excited for that. I like when bourbon has that wax seal on it. Um, yeah. Um, sometimes we, with um, Jim Beam products, they can be a little hard to open, open. up. So we'll see how this one is. This one seems like they did a, a very nice wax job on That's awesome. Give Ooh, me the honors. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see if I can do it. <laughs> Woo! I always expect it to be champagne. Mm -hmm. Like I know it's bourbon, <laughs> but I really always expect it to uh, be champagne. All right. I'm excited about this, guys. Let's do a pour. And we're definitely doing um, Booker's this week mm -hmm. because uh, we want to share with my brother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I hope that you guys are like our family and for every holiday or family gathering, you're like, what is the bourbon of choice for this one? Like, what can we bring over? Because our family definitely does that. Yes. <laughs> it's a very nice, nice tradition that has been started. I can almost smell like the vanilla from right here. It is super <laughs> fragrant just from pouring it. Yes. Waft. Waft. 
camera might be a little high. Um, we'll just keep that back here. Hopefully yeah, you can all apologies. see that. <laughs> we went on a little road trip and we took our camera with us. We had to change our setup. Yes. You'll hear more about that road trip shortly. If you can't see how beautiful this bottle is, there will be pictures on our Instagram that you can yeah. check out. At Babes of Bourbon. Yes. It was funny. We um, had the pleasure of going on a Jay Henry tour. Um, oh, I always forget the town. Is it? Oh, uh, it's Madison. But, but what's the county? Dale County? Dane. Dane. Dane county. I keep wanting to say Dale, and I know it's not Dale. Um, it's up in Dane County, Wisconsin. And I think... That was where we were just, you know, chit-chatting with other people that were there. And we mentioned, like, oh, you should follow the Babes of Bourbon. And they were like, oh, Babes of Bourbon, should And I was like, no, it's us. <laughs> <laughs> so, I always think that's really funny about our name. <laughs> we thought we were hilarious when we created it. Yes. <laughs> this has a great nose, in my opinion. It does. I'm getting, like, vanilla. Caramel, of course. Mm -hmm. What I will say for this is, like, you know, a lot of bourbon has caramel. Mm -hmm. I get, like, a very distinct caramel note, yes. though. Not just, like, oh, I don't know what to call it. It's caramel. Like, this smells like a warm caramel sauce. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting too much else. Yeah. Now, usually with Jim Beam products, there's, like, nuttiness in here. And I'm trying to take enough sniffs where I'm like, is there nuttiness in here? I'm not really getting too much of it. No, but it, it seems like it might be there. Yeah. Close. Maybe it's going to be um, in the, the palette. palette. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shall we? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. I need to do another sip. We haven't drank any bourbon today, and that proof is really high for me. Yep, and we're jumping right into it. <laughs> <laughs> I need, <laughs> like, um, just when you're listening to people that talk about bourbon, one of the things they say, you know what, we're the, we can be those people that people listen mm -hmm. to about <laughs> bourbon with fun facts. That's kind of cool. But they always say, like, never judge something on the first sip, especially if you haven't had anything that day because you really need to acclimate your palate before you can make a judgment call. I'm going back in. I mean, I'm getting those same. I'm getting vanilla, caramel, peanut. I mean, this tastes very very good to me almost like a vanilla ice cream mm. with like peanut sauce on top of it for me it's very rich mm -hmm. like the flavor if you're doing the kentucky chew and you kind of just roll it around your mm -hmm. mouth there's a ton of vanilla, There's, but there's a ton of um, probably flavor from the barrel. Mm -hmm. It's just a very rich rolling across that tongue, bringing a ton of warmth into your mouth. Mm -hmm. I'm still getting a finish on this one. I am too. Um, it really stays with you. Yeah, this is really good. I wasn't yeah. expecting too much, especially for the price. Um, Because you think it's priced appropriately or not? I think it's priced potentially. I don't know. We'll we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. It could be a little high, but I think this might be a really good batch. <laughs> Thank you, Donahue's yeah. batch. I'm just almost... This doesn't happen in a while. I'm a little dumbfounded with this one because... It's absolutely nothing like I was expecting. Like, mm -hmm. personally, I know a lot of people don't like Jim Beam or they diss it and they're like, oh, you gotta get blah, 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 blah. I really like Jim Beam products. I like Old Tub. I like Old Granddad 114. Mm -hmm. I've actually never tried traditional Jim Beam, but I'm not against their products at all. I enjoy that peanutty flavor. So I was expecting like a really strong peanut. Mm -hmm. And I'm not getting that at all. No, I'm getting like a vanilla custard. Yeah. Mixed with 
the nuttiness has really died down on this one. It's almost like a peanut sauce or nuts. Uh, <laughs> I won't say that. <laughs> Cashew sauce. Were you <laughs> I have so many jokes in my head right now. I'm gonna keep them to I myself. myself. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the bourbon, guys. In that last sip, I just got a little bit of the, as Eric said, cashew sauce, <laughs> <laughs> like a peanut butter sauce. Yes. Much more mild. I feel like this is a bottle that is going to open up more and more over time, which I'm super mm -hmm. excited for. It has a lot of spice in it too for me mm -hmm. like just when i went back to smelling it i'm getting some of those cinnamon nutmeggy notes mm. and then that, that that's the finish that i'm getting too yeah i would say if you're interested if you're thinking about this bottle mm -hmm. you need to like vanilla which most bourbon drinkers do it's not a huge like punch like this is vanilla extract, but it's like a creamy, like bold, caramely vanilla. A lot of baking spices in there. Mm -hmm. It has a huge punch to your tongue as you're drinking it. And I think that's where like the strong oak and strong spices are rolling over your, your mm -hmm. mouth. Um, and then that finish for me is really like that baking spices. I don't know all that are, I think there's a lot of different baking spices that I'm, I'm getting like that nutmeg, the clove. Yeah, the so, cinnamon. Yeah, sort of a combination mm -hmm. of a lot of things. Definitely. Um, yeah. The finish is long lasting. For me, it doesn't have an oily mouthfeel, but it is very long lasting, which is odd because to me, most of the bourbons that I have that have that long mouth, mm -hmm. like the long finish are due to like it being a little bit oily, I'm not getting that. But the flavors just stay with you. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that's because of proof. Go it ahead. most likely is. Shall we get into our yeah. scoring? So nose out of two. Um, I'm going to give it a 1.25. I like the nose. I think the nose is very pleasant. It's very aromatic. I don't think there's anything that's super stand out for me but it's very enjoyable. No, and this is the first pour out of here. It could open up a little more. It absolutely will. Um, right now, what I'm, I would agree with the 1.25. It's a very, very good standard bourbon nose for me. I agree. For palate? Palate, I absolutely love it. Do you? I'm giving it a 2.5. Mm. The way it stands now, I'm going to give it a 1.75, but I'm going to put a disclaimer on there, guys. I think like what Eric said, this is going to be the bottle that like if you wait two weeks and try it again, could mm -hmm. have, like it has that potential to be a favorite. Mm -hmm. Like this almost to me could be one that like goes into the decanter mm -hmm. and just like continues to be delicious. Mm -hmm. So... Finish. Finish. Out of two, I am going to give it um, a 1.25 again out of two. I mm -hmm. think it's long lasting. I think it's good. It has a little bit of a Kentucky hug for me in my upper chest. Mm -hmm. And again, that's probably because of proof. If I was sitting here drinking a couple of drinks and then had this, I probably wouldn't notice that as much. I am going to give it a 1.25 as well. Um, again, it's a good finish. It's like your typical bourbon finish, those spices, those, um, and a little bit of caramel that I enjoy, but I don't think it's anything that unique. I think where this one really shines is on that initial taste. Absolutely. And I had to do a calculation because I realized I used points for every single one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, no! All right, pricing and availability out of three. Okay, and this is where I wanted to give a little disclaimer about why some people think this is overpriced. It used to be about fifty to sixty dollars. Oh, really? Yes, about four to five years ago, maybe a little sooner than that even. Um, and then recently there has been an increase up to eighty and then a hundred dollars. So 
and it's not that it got any older or anything like that because they always pick based off of taste rather than age. So there's the disclaimer. Some people are, are upset about that increase in price. I understand. And others are still buying it. It's hard to find still. <laughs> yeah. Or at least around here. <laughs> So for pricing and availability, I was going to go like right in the middle at a 1.5. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is too overpriced. Like when you're looking at the packaging, you know some of your money is going into that. It comes in mm -hmm. a really nice box that's stamped. The bottle itself is beautiful. It's got this nice wax seal and the ribbons. Um, availability, of course, it's a little bit scarce. I think it, it can be found. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, it, it can be a little bit difficult, but like you said, with it being around like that 95 price point, um, on, on my estimation, that's a little high for me. Mm hmm I agree. Um, I think it is slightly highly priced, um, okay. but at the same time, if this was 50 to $60 in this packaging, you're pretty much you would have a very, very tough time finding this bottle. So I understand why mm -hmm. it's priced. And another thing I just want to mention, this packaging, the stories behind it, this is like the number one bottle that I would probably buy to impress guests with. Absolutely. And if they aren't used to barrel proof, I think this one would be a great bourbon that you could throw over some ice, a, a big ice cube, and people could easily yeah. enjoy this too. Or add like some distilled water, like mm -hmm. you have that in your house, some water droplets to it. That can definitely help people that aren't used to drinking barrel strength. So my score is a 1.5 as well. Very nice. Yes. Do you need a calculator? To... No, I think I'm good. Oh, mental and... math. That's yes. hard for me sometimes. Um, my final score right now is a 5.75. However, I would like to revisit this bottle in a little bit after it's had time to open up and reevaluate. Mm -hmm. I'm giving, I did the math in my head, like making just said, a 6.5 out of 10. Nice. Um, I would definitely buy this again. Like Megan said, I want to see how this thing opens up and see how it tastes in the future. Um, and I think also, we'd have to put it in some blinds like Absolutely. against like the Elijah Craig barrel proofs, um, yes. the Bardstown. Yeah. Because those are the $130, $70 bottle and a 95 and see where it stacks up without considering the price at all. Yeah. Because yeah. And I don't know about you guys, but I, I love doing the blinds mm -hmm. because it tells a lot about the bourbon and what I actually like. Like sometimes you just can't help but judging it like off the label. Not that I'm judging this one off the label, I don't mm -hmm. think, because I like the label, the label's good. Um, but it just really helps stack if you're doing like bourbons. I think we made a few mistakes in the past when we were a little younger in the channel, because mm -hmm. we're so old now, where like we were mixing like some rise or some barrel strength versus not, and that can kind of throw off your palate. But if you mm -hmm. compare it to like things, that's, a, that's something that we've really learned from this. Mm -hmm. um, That'll really help determine what you actually like. Yeah. I, yeah, I enjoyed this one. Yeah. Um, be interesting to see how it opens up. Yeah. I recommend <laughs> trying it. If you do get your hands on it, I mm -hmm. think this is definitely something to try. I think it's a little bit different than what people sip on a lot of times, especially with the barrel strength. Oh, I know what I was going to say. If you could find this at $78, um, my Absolutely score is that. going to go up to like 7.5. <laughs> but so if we at, could have gotten that bottle on sale, we yes. could have just bought it, you'd be happier. At, at 95, that's where the 6.5 is coming Guys, in. Guys, he think... was such a grumpy Gus after. Yes. <laughs> like, he was so grumpy about it. Well, very quick, we were in Kentucky. I sort of wanted to get my first bottle of Booker's because I knew Megan liked the Jim Beam products and I knew this was supposed to be very good. Mm -hmm. And we were going home and it was $95. I was like, yeah, let's just do it. We're on the last shit. bottle we buy, right? <laughs> and then, um, yeah. Yeah. And then Found the next store was 78. 78. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's okay. But anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. If you get your hands on it or see it out at a restaurant or something, absolutely give it a try. Comment. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you think. 
Um, thank you so much for watching and to all of our subscribers. If you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that like button and that share button. Yes. All the awesome. buttons. Well, thank you so much, everybody. I hope you all have a great night or day whenever you're watching this. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.